<laughs> oh hey, what the flip is up, Tube Nation? How we doing? Are you still at your parents' house? Yes, I'm enjoying myself. I kind of wanted to make a little bit more of a serious video this time. My last three videos have been so <sighs> silly vibes. This video, we're gonna strip it back. We're gonna talk about love. And this video is sponsored by MTV's X on the Beach. We're gonna get nitty and gritty and deep and personal. And we love silly vibes. It's a great distraction from reality. <laughs> but I wanted to dive deep into the concept of love. The concept of the sacrifices that you have to make to fall in love and to completely put your heart out there. And it's so scary to be vulnerable, to truly let go and let someone hold your heart. That's basically what it feels like. Like they're holding your heart in their hands and they have control of your emotions. That's like how it feels. But if you tap into it and let them hold your heart without being fearful, it's truly the best feeling in the world. If love is a behavior, because that's what my dad told me, love is a behavior. If love is a behavior, yet we continuously hurt the ones that we love, do we really love them? And I went on Instagram and I asked you guys like what you thought about that, why we hurt the ones that we love if we love them. Like shouldn't love be consciously being aware of your actions with the person if love is a behavior? I've been thinking about this a lot just by observing. I've been observing a lot these past few weeks with a bunch of different people and asking myself and questioning what love is. And I always wanna know what love is to other people. Exploring fear in relationships is really interesting to me too and it's really tough, especially when you've been hurt over and over and over again in relationships. How do you not go into other relationships after that without that fear of them being just like the others? Yeah, I just asked you guys, what are your fears with love? Why do you guys feel like you're not worthy of love if you do feel that way? And I also wanted to know if you guys had any questions about it and maybe I can answer some. I don't know, I'll try. I'm not a scientist or a therapist. But um, I can kind of give you my perspective on it. If it resonates with you, that's great. I'm not a professional, so I'm gonna read some of your guys' stuff. And some of what you guys ask aren't even questions. They're just how you feel. I think that they're really interesting and I agree with a lot of you guys. If you were stranded on a deserted island with your ex, what are the chances of you two getting back together? I feel like we would drive each other crazy. I feel like that would bring out a lot of toxicity in us. I would be like, no, you do it. And he'd be like, no, you do it. I'm like, no, you do it. He'd be like, no, you do it. And I'm like, ugh. This is why we broke up. No, I'm kidding, I'm just kidding. If you're watching this, I love you. We're still friends. I feel like it would be kind of funny and fun and we would make it fun. But I don't think that type of situation could spark up <laughs> feelings like that. I don't think I just wanna do that, period. Um, doesn't matter who I'm with. That's a stressful situation, but that's like constant, never-ending stress, and there needs to be breaks, okay? I don't wanna be stressed 24-7, so I feel like being trapped with my ex that's already stressful. Already trying to figure out the dynamic between us and how we're gonna not make this weird. And then on top of that, how do we get food? Like what? No. <laughs> I don't think that that would work. Love you though, if you're watching. Nah, I just don't wanna do that period. I just don't wanna do that period. Speaking of being stranded on a deserted beach with your ex. The global phenomenon, X on the beach is finally back, people. And it's back on MTV. The concept of this show is just so, it is so fantastic. It's a bunch of singles in this house. They're all sharing a house on the beach. They think it's gonna be a fun and flirty time, like mingling with the other singles, you know? Potentially falling in love with each other, having fun, being crazy. And then all of the sudden, their exes 
all of their exes just wash up on the shore. They just show up out of nowhere and they kill the entire vibe. Ugh. It just disrupts the whole environment. All the singles in the house are like, why are, what? It is so chaotic, but it's so entertaining. Just watching them navigate through that awkward tension and like trying to figure out how to coexist with their exes, it's so interesting. And the concept of the show is, will they finally succeed in love with their ex? Like, will they rekindle and work on it? Or will they try to get with someone new at the house? But then that gets messy because then your ex has to watch you try to be with someone else and so then there's jealousy and it's crazy. Oh my god, this concept, like you can't, you can't look away. Like there's just so much happening. And the personalities on that show, they're genuinely funny. I giggle out loud to myself when I watch it. I found myself being very entertained by Mike. He was on the Lohan Beach House and I loved that show. So seeing Mike in this environment was very interesting. He just cracked me up. This show is about to be your new <laughs> reality TV obsession. I'm not kidding. You can watch new episodes of X on the Beach on Thursdays starting March 31st at 8 p.m. only on MTV. And let's get on with the next question. Okay, this person asked, if love is a behavior, wouldn't it be different for everyone to behave slash act? I mean, yes. I feel like everyone's love that they experience with someone is completely different different and special and unique. The person that you love, you guys are individual people with backgrounds and backstories and stories and traumas and information. I also think that you know when someone is being loving towards you and when someone is not being loving towards you. It's that simple. Like, it's a freeing feeling and you feel connected and understood and heard. When someone isn't making you feel like that, making you cry, calling you names, ignoring you, that's not loving. So I feel like people can kind of get the gist of the behavior on their own. You know what I'm saying? And also love languages. You have to learn each other's love languages. A lot of people have completely different love languages. There's physical touch, there's acts of service, words of affirmation, gift giving, and what's the last one? Oh yeah, and quality time. You can tell how important that is to me. That's so sad. No, but quality time is an important one. And this is just like how you feel loved by people. I think it's different between a romantic partner and friendships because in a romantic situation, it's physical touch, words of affirmation, but not too much. I think that's number three. So physical touch and then acts of service. I receive love like that because that's how my mom would show love to me as a kid. Even though for a really long time, I tried to reject that because whenever my mom would show me love like that, I would think that it was controlling. She was just trying to control me and put me in a box because I have chronic ADHD and my mom is very organized. So she showed me love by helping me organize my physical environment. Just help me stay organized in my brain. Growing up, I would get triggered and angry because I'm like, you don't think I can do this myself? But she's like, no, I just want to because I like to because I can tell that this is um, a little bit more difficult for you but and I love doing this so just let me do it and it took me years to like finally take a step back and just like let my mom express her love for me and honestly it's pretty lit this is the first time where I'm really like stepping back and receiving that I'm like sure mom you can make me breakfast <laughs> every day. I notice in romantic situations, if they want to do something so small, like go get my car washed or helping me out with little tasks that can seem to pile on for me since sometimes I'm very forgetful. Does that make sense? Replacing my Brita filter. What? I never think to replace my Brita filter or just like clean out my vacuum, you know, empty the dust. Like little things like that 
oh, it makes me, it just makes my heart so warm. Cause I'm like, OMG, you know me. Like you get me. Cause you know that like I would forget to do that. So I, I think that that's something that I'm starting to come to terms with. But it's, it's crazy cause I don't want that in friendships at all. Like I don't want my friends to do shit for me. Cause I'm like, I'll do it. And also that's not their responsibility. Cause when people ask me to help them do stuff, I'm like, yeah. I don't think about it at all. Yet I reject friends helping me. It's like a challenge for me to do it myself. Maybe that triggers from childhood and my mom doing a lot of things for me. Like with roommates, that's different. Acts of service is like, we're both coming together and cleaning our space. Acts of service in an, a romantic partner, that's like the closest person to me. Since this is like an intimate, connection it's romantic and there's very intense feelings it's almost like you guys are like flowing next to each other so for a romantic partner to do acts of service for me they see me for who i am whether i like it or not you know for everything that i am like ego aside like there, there's no ego there like so i don't reject that if that makes sense but with my friends i'm like I, I got it but I can help you, you know? I don't know, that's interesting. And then physical touch, I don't really hug my friends. I only hug my friends if I haven't seen them for a really long time. Yo, what's up? Oh, I missed ya. Okay, don't touch me. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's just like too much. It, I think it's just too much stimulation. Just, let's just not. I don't understand friends that cuddle. Never understood that concept, ever. That makes me uneasy. <laughs> like, which is sad. Mm-mm. Cuddling with your, like, friend? What are we doing? What are we doing? And I'm not saying that that's me automatically thinking that it would turn sexual, because I don't think that way, but it's just like, why are we doing this? But with a romantic partner, I'm a cuddle bug. I'm a cuddle bug. I am so touchy. Physical touch for me in romantic relationships, it's just so important to me because it's so validating, I guess. Like, it depends on the movements. Duh, like, don't hit me. Like, don't punch me. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I think that it's so sweet. Like, just little strokes on your wrist, like, holding hands and stroking your hand while walking down the street, I think is just, those little physical gestures are so precious. So yeah, love a massage. Are we kidding? If you wake me up with a massage. Okay. And if you're good, like if you're good and have gentle hands, it, I just like feel loved. Like someone's like nurturing me physically with their hands. Hands are so healing. It's such a release of energy. Your hands are so energetic. That's why people pay to get massages and when you're stressed, you go get a massage because it's such a healing release. And when that person loves you, it's just, oh my God, it's amazing. This isn't new, but like, it's just so loving. After a long day at work and then just getting a foot rub and you don't even have to ask. That's like a combination of acts of service and physical touch, which is a dream. But yeah, love languages. I went on a rant with that. That was the first question. But what if your parents' relationship was shit, so that's why you don't believe in love? Totally, you are what you know. If you grew up and love was modeled to you as something toxic and you've never seen a healthy relationship in your life, I get it, but I do want you to know that it does exist. I think fear is louder because our survival instincts kick in when something feels risky, like love. Yeah, fear is just survival from the caveman days. That's why we've evolved so much as a species, because we were able to have that fear and protect ourselves from danger and not get killed. 
having that fear is important but i also think that that fear gets over activated during really inappropriate times since we've always had that voice in our head i call mine becky love her i know you're just trying to protect me but relax i know that she's only doing this because of me being hurt as a young kid and me just trying to survive so she pops up and yabs it's so cool that the brain can do that and sense danger like that and that is important and very useful in dangerous situations but i don't want to hear becky blabbing when i'm just ordering coffee at starbucks talking to the barista becky's like oh don't mess up the order don't mess up the order you're gonna mess up and when you mess up she's gonna think you're so stupid it's like what are you doing calm down and i only know that she's doing that because one bitch in first grade made fun of me for saying the wrong answer in class and everyone laughed because i said the wrong answer and then becky's like stupid 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 they all think you're stupid they're laughing 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 because you're dumb as rocks and i'm like maybe i am as a first grader and then that just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew so it's time to simmer down sweetie i don't need you anymore i need you but not for that and just be aware of that happening and knowing that that's not real it's just trying to protect you and then you can look it in the face and be like it just takes practice though like anything like playing piano how do you differentiate an obsession for someone and an actual true love i think an obsession with someone or even lust if you will is all about how they make you feel it's all about how they make you feel it's like a selfish energy like for example I was legitimately obsessed with Harry Styles. Was I actually in love with him? No. I thought I was, but that wasn't love. Because at the end of the day, I don't know Harry. I don't know what he's like behind closed doors. I never talked to Harry in my life. But I watch his interviews and I think I know him. I think I know everything about him. Now that I'm older, it was like pretty unhealthy. I don't regret being obsessed with him whatsoever, but I can look back and realize that like that is just setting me up for failure emotionally because I, Harry's not gonna love me back like that. But when you're in love with someone, you truly are in love with their soul. Like you see them. You see them, you spend time with them. You see them in very vulnerable moments that a lot of people don't see. In those vulnerable moments where you see people is how you fall in love with them. I truly think that. In like those little tiny weird moments, just watching them fold their laundry, like little moments like that is where you sit there and like watch them be a human. And that's when you fall in love with them. Like I don't, I've never seen Harry fold his laundry vulnerably. You know, I've never seen Harry like pick his nose and then flick it. Like, I'm, <laughs> you know, it, it's like those little moments where you capture the person as a real person in your life that's like raw and beautiful even if they're just random mundane things and in those like intimate conversations that you have with them too one-on-one -on -one, where they can trust you and open up to you about things that they've gone through them crying to you moments like that that's where you build trust and you build love and you build a foundation and everything is based on trust like being in love with someone and being in a relationship with someone, trust is the most important thing. If you don't have that, your foundation is ruined because then you're in constant fear. You don't feel safe. 
Long story short, my theory is obsession and lust is all about how they make you feel. And then being in love with someone is how they feel around you and how you feel around them and you feeling safe, vulnerable enough to kind of just show those like awkward and weird moments that you would normally have when you're alone. You know, it's just very raw and um, it's beautiful when you can get to that point with someone and there's like romantic and intimate feelings there. It's like incredible. I think one of the most intimate things you can do to like test that is go on a trip with them. See how you guys travel together. Like how you guys navigate stressful situation. I feel like that is such a key component in finding out compatibility. At the end of the day, life is stressful. Life is terrible, but really good. But it can get really terrible. And um, I think it's really important to see one another handle stressful, uncomfortable, painful situations and how you can be there to support one another. Obviously not like trauma bonding. Travel with them and see how they manage an airport, how you guys can help each other manage the stress and you both don't know how to manage those intense emotions it can get pretty toxic really quick that's a good indicator am i a genius i don't know someone says i love this the more that you fight to love yourself you're telling the universe you're ready to welcome love not fear it's just proving to the universe that you are ready for actual love to come into your life because if you're filling yourself up with it, you're gonna know what you deserve and you're gonna know what love really feels like to you and you're not gonna settle for anything less. You're not gonna settle for anything other than what you deserve. And the only way you can truly feel that is by filling up your own cup all the way to the top. And it's hard to do. Um, and a lot of people are like, how do I even do that? For me, and I still struggle with this, and this is how I kind of know that I'm not ready for love yet. It's by every day being conscious that you have a body. Do with that what you will. But once I discovered that that was a lot of what it takes to love yourself is just being conscious of you having a body and how you're treating your body and what you're saying to your body and being nice to it, that will start to change everything. In every situation, think about the fact that you have a body. Like for example, I'm, I'm trying really hard to be conscious of just my lungs right now. It's like appreciating and doing things for my body that I know it deserves. Just having a relationship with it. That's exactly what self-love is. Self-love isn't all just like meditating and Wow, I love myself. <laughs> no, it's like the little annoying things that you don't want to do. Like spending all night naked in your room and trying to be comfortable with that. Because if you're not comfortable with that, how are you going to be comfortable with someone else with that? It's like little things like that. Little things like that. And those are the hardest things. But once you get through that, the fear of being with someone and the fear of someone seeing you for who you truly are. No, because there's no fear. You love it, you love yourself. So anyone's welcome. Everybody's welcome into the myself party. It just gets easier to let people in once you truly know what to do what's right for you and you truly know how you deserve to be treated and like you don't let people walk all over you, you don't let people talk to you a certain way, you start to stand up for yourself, you don't let people cross your boundaries, you don't let people get loud with you, you don't let people call you names. Like if you start showing up for yourself and standing up for yourself, being aware that you have a body, and a mind, it'll just all start to make sense and get clear because then you're not gonna depend on anyone else to fix you because they can't. It's impossible. They can be by your side, but at the end of the day, this is your game. This, 
Your life is your life. Their life is their life. That's their game. You can't expect someone to come in and fix you. It's up to you. You just have to accept that. And you just have to do what's best for you. I have to practice what I preach because I'm literally in the thick of that. And if the decisions that you're making doesn't align with who you are to the core, you're gonna create some weird tension with yourself, unalignment, cognitive dissonance, because you're straying away from who you are at your core. Why? To impress people? To impress Brad, who has chili on his shirt from his chili cheese dog? Ew. No. Someone says, hey girl dog, do you think love as a behavior allows you to be fooled less since feelings can be faked? Yeah. Someone can say they like me all they want. They can love me all they want. Show me. And vice versa. I can say that I like someone all that I want or love someone all that I want. But I, at the end of the day, know it's real or if it's not by how much effort I put into it. I'm talking mostly about romantic partners because with friendships, you can go like, for me, I go a few weeks without talking to some of my friends sometimes. And that's just because we got lives and like some of my friends have kids. We're all adults. So with that, it's more flexible. But with romantic partners, you really gotta step up and show this person that you deserve to be a like number one priority in their life and to like love you and like you have to show up for them so that you can build trust. That's huge, because if, if you weren't a priority on their mind, they just don't care to let you know what's going on in their life. If they wanted to, they would, y'all. Love is a behavior. It's kind of the same thing as if they wanted to, they would. It sucks, but also that's on them. They're missing out. Don't let it stop you from being vulnerable and like opening your heart up to people. Like, okay. You can either blame it all on you and then you look inward and think that there's something wrong with you and like, oh my God, he doesn't like me. Like, what's wrong with me? Like, what did I do? Or you can look at it for what it really is. Someone who was not ready for you. They're not ready to do that because of fear. That's not on you. <sighs> all right, I think that's enough. <laughs> I think I've talked too much. Um, let me know if you guys like this format. It's it's nice for me as much as I I love editing. It's a craft. It's fun for me to do, but I also enjoy this stuff too. And this is the real me. But anyway, let me know if you guys like this format. I can keep doing it. Uh, I can talk about this subject all day long. I'm gonna go. Thanks again to MTV's X on the Beach for sponsoring. I love you. Be safe. Have a great week and weekend. Love y'all.